What's going on guys, Bengal again here, coming at you for week 17 action against the New Orleans Saints. I did promise at the start of the last episode that we would check in on some of these prospects, and I'm pretty much in the same spot. I do need to use some of my staff points as well, but we have a better idea of what the left ends are looking like. Do we know about the right ends? We do. So we know the left and right ends, what their true talent is if they were in a certain area. So if, if they played in the southeastern conference or the southeast as they say in the game you know it includes acc teams as well um we know them 100 percent what their true talent is and adrian lake for a round one to two projection with a true round one talent that is improvement and he looks good looks good and then for guys down the board like dennis billups out of georgia tech here's an acc guy b power moves decent athlete maybe worth a sixth or seventh round pick but someone like jarius knighton top five true talent is you know back into the first round into the second round probably not interested and that you know is what i can say about a lot of these defensive ends just not really interested in really any of them i think when we get to the off season and i do my focus players bryson Hendricks will be a focus player for me because he looks really really good b hit power b man b tackle b zone very well balanced with good to great acceleration Good to great agility solid to good change of direction good to great jumping and then as you can see speed is great to elite strength is whatever and then skills wise he has a awareness that you couldn't see uh b play rec he is very good b pursuit we didn't talk about that he's got b everything he's really well balanced and he's a pretty good athlete now we know glenn gore is a top five talent in the draft and i've seen a couple comments that say don't get too caught up with top five talent because i've gotten a glitch before that showed everybody's top five talent it's not everybody it's when there is a top five let, well, let me break it down like this let's say the top four overall players are an 80 right and then there are let's say seven players after that that are a 78 overall if he's, if Glenn Gore would be a 78 overall, and he's the fifth player in that top five, even though there are seven players who have the same overall as him, they would also be listed as a top five talent as far as I'm aware. So it's not a glitch. They're just the same overall as the last player or any player in the top five. That's just what that means. He is maybe a little bit less of a great athlete, but still very, very good. I, and I, the only reason I say he's maybe a little bit less is he doesn't have great to elite speed. He has great to elite agility instead, but good to great speed, which hopefully would be great. And then skill-wise, A awareness, A catching, A zone coverage, B play rec, B pursuit, B hit power, B tackle. Very good. Man coverage is only a C, but you're not really going to be playing a ton of man as a as a safety. Sometimes, maybe more at strong safety, but sometimes, for sure, it's you need it, but it isn't the end-all, be-all. The thing I, I worry about with him is struggles to find the ball in the air. Don't know how much that plays a factor in game. And then I do like my linebackers. I really do. John Bost, I think is too good to pass on. Pass coverage type with B to D block shed. Don't love that. But A pursuit, A tackle, A zone coverage with great to elite acceleration, great to elite agility, good to great change of direction, good to great jumping, great to elite speed. Strength isn't big, but down the board for around three to four projected player is a fantastic pickup. Has to be drafted in the second round if we have a pick in the second round has to be done he's just too good and then of course you guys are actually on board with caleb claiborne which i was pretty excited about because obviously he looks amazing run stopper archetype with a zone coverage seemed to really really guys in and when you look at him and his scouting report physical player who delivers bone crushing hits struggles to find the ball in the air or whatever he's a linebacker don't really care that much compared to a safety has a motor that runs through the whistle Often looks to rip the ball from runners, so strip ball trait. Lacks discipline, resulting in avoidable penalties. Blah, whatever. Loves to utilize spin as a counter move. Swift arm over move in his arsenal. And will utilize power and leverage to both for pass protectors. So you have a run stopper with B block shed. Good at defending the run. With going up uh, from down to up here. He has the bull rush trait. He has the swim move trait. He has the spin move trait. He has the strip ball trait. As the big hitter trait. And then obviously, great athlete, good to great acceleration, solid to good agility and change of direction, good to great jumping, great to elite speed. So that's 88 plus probably, decent to solid strength. The ability is all the way there for him. And for someone with the big hitter trait, I would struggle to think that his hit power 
is anything less than a B. Could be a C, I guess. I don't think it's a D. I don't. But obviously a really good player, and I think could be a really good piece of our defense. Teaming up with Dontrell Cobb, both Notre Dame linebackers in just a draft class apart. And uh, Dontrell Cobb was a year older at 23. I think Caleb Claiborne there was 22. So, I mean, they're right there. Would have been teammates. You guys know how it is. Kind of a fun storyline. And if we lose Tay Crowder, which is a possibility, we have to understand that. He's going to be 27 years old. He is a 76 overall. I'm not saying we're going to lose him no matter what, but I'm not sure about a long-term commitment, especially when the player, Tay Crowder, does not want to be here. Resign interest is nil. Does not want to sign. We don't have a franchise quarterback. We, we're not in his proper scheme fit. He wants to get paid. Guess what I don't want to do? is give Tay Crowder a big contract. He's asking for about $5 million a year, a little bit less than that. It's not too much, and it's a two-year contract, which I'm not all that mad about, but it's not something I'm going to commit to now. That's going to be an off-season thing, I think. Melvin Gordon, Dexter Lawrence is a big one, where I probably will have to overpay if I want him on the team. Just is what it is. He's going to want, you know, probably something like this, over $10 million a year, and it's something I'm really going to consider. But we'll, we might wait for that in the offseason too. I'm not sure. Let me know down in the comments section below how you feel about Dexter Lawrence. I think he's a good player. I'd like to have him back. But at the same time, I don't think we can give him like 15 mil a year. It might not take that though. Staff points. We have 46. I want to increase XP gains. And we're going to do... We're going to do... All players on your team count as scheme fits during training. Finally unlocking that. Slow ratings regression for one season, for one position, I think could come in clutch down the line. Not so much right now. And then I want to increase the XP gains for offensive linemen. Really want to do that, so we're going to go ahead and do that as well. And then I have to change Deontay Foreman's number. He came into the game for like the first time all season, wearing number seven, which is a retired number by Mel Hine, Giants legend. And he simply can't be wearing that. We're going to give him 37. Not really a big commitment number-wise. Not really that desirable of a number for the Texas legend, but let's go to the other side of the Red River here. Derek Cooper, 99 snaps away from knowing his development trait. I think there's a really, really good chance he has superstar, and I'll tell you why. Here's why I think he has superstar. Well, one, you get like more of an athlete than anything else down the board, you know, mid-round player. Here's why I think he has superstar. His player tag is day one starter. And he had that would have been at a 66 overall at middle linebacker. He jumped up significantly when moving to outside linebacker. So maybe the tag changed. I guess that's a possibility. So maybe he doesn't have superstar dev. But I think there's a good chance he does. And I don't say that often. I, I thought Larry Smith. I, I guess I thought he could have had superstar as well. Just because he has like 98 speed and 96 spectacular catch. I'm like, okay, that's pretty amazing. Maybe he does. Just a great player. I thought Jaden Rhodes could have superstar because he's really, really big. And I heard that big tight ends have a... <laughs> they have, you know, a good chance for superstar dev this year. And then Akil Edmonds probably star. I don't know. I just think with the athletic profile plus the day one starter tag, I think there's a pretty good chance. But I'm sure we're going to be disappointed when it's star. And it doesn't really do a whole lot, but it does look nice. I guess we'll defend the outside run against Alvin Kamara. And then I need to go half pads and split because Saquon barely played last game. I guess fatigue became a really, really big factor. So we need to get him back and ready to play. Run outside, sure. Works for me. Half pads and we're going to split. And hopefully Saquon actually stays in the game so we have a better chance to win today. Let's allow two or less passing touchdowns, allow 24 points or less, 250 plus offensive yards, and I mean, we're probably going to get sacked by some point, or at some point, we'll go, um, we'll go 15 first downs, 15 plus, plus. and then I'm, I'm still comfortable with all the players we have in there, so I'm going to go ahead and do training and see where we are. I think we might have an upgrade or two. These players are still getting fatigued, even at half pads and splitting. I might have to give them to the backups. 
um, next training because, man, these boys are fatigued. And we don't have any upgrades either. This could really hurt our performance today. I know their record isn't great, but we're playing a pretty good team. I mean, look at all the superstar X-Factors that they have. Tyron Matthew, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, Cam Jordan, still really good. Got to watch out for the speed of Chris Olave. We do have the home game, but this is a really good team that we're playing. And it, you know why? We might have more fatigue than usual. It is a Thursday night primetime game. Nick Duval, though, having a great year. Had a huge 72-yard catch and run in the last game, going for over 1,300 yards in his rookie season. Demario Davis on this team, Marshawn Lattimore. This is a really, really tough team for not a great overall. We're going to check in with uh, the offense or the defense, depending on who comes out on the field first. But this is not going to be an easy game for a three-win team. They are very, very good. Cody Bailey taking the field in prime time. 29 touchdowns, 29 interceptions. Something has got to give today. Not necessarily. We can keep it tied, but uh, we'll see what happens, man. We're a good team. We're a playoff team. We got to continue to build momentum. And Wyatt Anthony, the record breaker. If you missed last episode, what are you doing? But as Jameis Winston takes the field, we'll see his numbers and then meet the New Orleans offense. Jameis. 3,700 yards, 22 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. Not really a bad year by Jameis Winston standards. We'll take a look at this team and what should be a pretty good offensive line minus losing out on Eric McCoy, who is now on this Giants team despite signing an extension in real life. Jameis isn't great. We know about Jameis Winston. He's going to throw us the ball today, probably. Alvin Kamara is really good. Benny Snell, not a bad change of pace back. The rookie Benji Wheeler. What are the guys having two Bens on the team? And neither of them are Ben or Benjamin. Benny and Benji. Fullback, Nick Ralston. And then the receivers, Michael Thomas, still very good. Chris Olave. The rookie Walter Blade. I don't need that. That's an interesting name. Uh, of course, the tight end that I really considered drafting, Chris Kennard out of Oregon State. It came down to Nick Duval or Chris Kennard. Uh, we made the right decision, by the way, as Kennard had only normal development. But it looks like he has the day one starter tag. And uh, he's starting over Cole Komet, who's rated higher than he is. And Adam Troutman in there as well. Trevor Penning at left tackle. Andrews Pete, Patrick Morris starting at center. I need my interior defensive lineman to cook today. Cesar Ruiz at right guard. And, of course, one of the best right tackles in the league, Ryan Ramchek. Left end is Cameron Jordan. We'll just go over it now. Dante Fowler Jr., and Peyton Turner on the other side. Travis Fowler, defensive tackle with Roy Lopez up the middle as well. Linebackers, Anthony Nelson, Michael Kendricks, Demario Davis, Damian Wilson. Pete Warner going to be injured today, so Zach Bond might see a ton of playing time. And then a corner, we have Marshawn Lattimore, Paulson Adebo, Bradley Roby, Alante Taylor with the safeties, Marcus May, and Tyron Matthew. These Giants home blues looking really, really good here on primetime, I think. As Winston going to air it out. Complete it to Chris Olave down the field. Now second year player out of Ohio State. We know the Saints in Ohio State is basically a pipeline. They have so many Ohio State players. Pete Warner, Marshawn Lattimore, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara. is not one, but he gets the carry. I don't know why I said Alvin Kamara. Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Pete Warner, Marshawn Lattimore. There are more, I promise. Yeah, I'm going through here. Maybe they're... Oh, no, Bradley Roby's Ohio State. Okay, so there was another. There you go. Sponsor of today's video is Underdog. You can use code BANGLE at sign up. They'll match up to $100 on your first deposit. And we'll talk more about my individual slips at halftime. You can play in so many different states. So if you're interested in doing these daily pick'ems or daily fantasy sports, check out Underdog and be sure to use code BANGLE. It would help me out a lot. Let's talk about it more at halftime, though, and get back to the video. I feel like they used to have more, though. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Second and six for the Saints. Winston out of the gun. Kamara offset behind him. And it's a quick slant to Michael Thomas. Wow, Michael Thomas catching a slant. Who would have ever even thought of that? What an idea. Saints offense, truly revolutionary here in Madden. First and 10 for the Saints, though. Into Giants territory from the 44. Going to be a run to Kamara. And it's a spin move from hell. Kamara down the field. Into the... Oh, my. What is happening? Screw the commentary. How does that happen? It's the slowest spin move maybe ever. And it completely 
destroyed Dontrell Cobb. The rookie. Destroyed by the veteran. All right. We're locking back in. First and 10 from the Saints, or for the Saints from the 11. We're going to vacate, and uh, it doesn't matter. Chris Olave got in front, and Jameis found him. Touchdown Saints. Really good first drive for them. Winston just standing tall in the pocket. Olave was... Oh, it was <laughs> Olave had to beat Derek Cooper in coverage. Who would have thought? Unbelievable. Dude, we have... Uh, he's so bad in coverage. That's really his true flaw right now. Uh, I don't know how that ended up happening. But yeah, it's not great. Bit of a scuffed start to this game. Not going to lie. Saints with the momentum. And uh, we'll see what our offense can do. Larry Smith back to return. And we get bumped with Skylar Styles. Get out of the way, idiot. First and 10. Good to see Saquon back out there. We're actually going to hit him. If you watched the last game, Saquon kind of decided to take himself out of the game. Said, you guys got this. You don't need me. But we do need you, Saquon. We do. And it's good to see him back out here. And as we, we talked about in the last episode, wanted to get him more involved as a receiver. Try to cut that one back up. Seems like it was not the right call. Brings up third and two. Might run the ball again, though, on third and short. Here we go from the 35. Saquon gets the first down. Ooh, what a juke from Saquon. Could have been big yardage. Is it time to take a shot? It might be. We're going down the field. Larry Smith with a step, and Bailey hits him. Larry Smith, huge first down. It was indeed time to take a shot. If Bailey put it out a little bit farther down the field, probably a touchdown. Regardless, little slot fade from Larry Smith can you know nearly call that a switch release. Not quite, but 50 plus air yards down the sideline. Matthew just doesn't have the speed to catch up to Larry Smith. Plain and simple. Second and goal from the seven. Jason Garrett's favorite play, stick. We're gonna go to Odell. Okay, nearly intercepted, right? Maybe. <laughs> Nearly a touchdown, too. There's another way to think about it. It's third and goal. We haven't moved the ball from the seven. The seven. This is a boys commercial. Cornerback press at the line. Do I try the fade to Odell? Yes. 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 Odell catches it, and he goes out of the end zone, and then right back in. Touchdown, Giants. Odell on primetime. Can't be stopped. Yeah, I was a little scuffed, but it's been a scuffed start to the game. Odell Beckham Jr. touchdown. We threw the fade. You guys were right. I was complaining about uh, an interception on a fade a few episodes ago. And the corner was impressed. I didn't even look. And I just kind of expected something else to happen. But against a pressed corner, yeah, you can throw that fade successfully. Uh, that was my fault before. But we notice it now. And we make it work correctly. And it's 7-7. Seven Kind of a weird drive, but you know what? It worked out. How about a little defense this drive? That that would be much appreciated. It's gonna be a run. It's play action, actually. And I don't know, interesting all around there. Probably not who I would have thrown to. But ball's incomplete. Coverage was tight enough. Now to I form. This surely will be a run. And Derek Cooper can just not wrap up Alvin Kamara today. Over pursuing a little bit for sure. It's third and six. We got to get out to the flat. They go over the middle. Again, great play design given our defense. Because if we stayed over the middle, it would have been a completion of the flat. Alvin Kamara, first down, probably end more. And then they had two players wide open over the middle as a result of a vacating the middle. I don't know how that's not an interception. Just kind of halted our momentum. Derek Cooper was lurking. Second and eight, and that one's intercepted. It's easy reads. Derek Cooper trying to outrun Blaine, and Cooper slicing through the defense, scoring the touchdown. It's D. Coop with the easy reads. Green eggs and ham, a classic for you. Derek Cooper playing a lot more because of that athleticism. Not great in coverage, but sometimes when you're fast enough, when you're a good enough athlete, you can make plays happen. And Cooper checks off a lot of those boxes. Touchdown, Giants. Defense gives us the lead. First turnover of the game for Jameis Winston. And I do highlight first. 
and not only, because there should be more. It's still early here at MetLife in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Saints will get the football back, and hopefully Jameis Winston gives us the football back. Maurice Hurst into the game. Don't see that too often. See if we can get to Jameis Winston. That's wide open down the sideline. It's Michael Thomas. Julian Love is diving. Why? What are you doing? Jackson in pursuit dives early. Oh my God, what are we doing? The Saints strike back in a hurry. When you let Michael Thomas beat you down the field, that's a problem. We were in zone coverage. Julian Love, not a great athlete and really hurts us there. Really hurts us. We were playing hard flats. Uh, Dory Jackson not responsible for that. That's Julian Love, man. I mean, good awareness of Jameis Winston to take advantage of the coverage, but also Julian Love, like you sold us down the river. You, he completely sold. Very different. Night and day from the game we played against the Cardinals. A lot of scoring in this game as we went the wrong direction with Saquon. Still end up getting positive yardage, though. He took a big hit, though, and Melvin Gordon will come to the game. Second and six. I think that's a fine time to run. And we will. Oh, no. What a shed there from Peyton Turner. Okay. That, okay. Third and seven. I might take a shot down the field. We had options. That was not the best one. <sighs> yeah. We'll punt. We just had, we had deep routes down the field and they blitzed. Always gets a little bit hairy. We'll end up punting. And, uh, yeah, man. Not the drive you're looking for. Obviously. Goes without saying. 26 to the 26, though. Good punt from Brock Cook. Dude, how gas is my team? William Golston is in the game. Quincy Roche's in the game. Good defense down the field. I don't mind it. It's like classic Steve Spagnolo action with Quincy Roche, another defensive end in. And the Giants in their prime, prime of the 2000s, I should say had a great rotation of pass rushers, and Steve Spagnuolo would send a lot of them out on the field at the same time. You would see Matthias Kiwanuka and Justin Tuck and O.C. Minura. O.C. is one of my favorite players of all time. Don't show him enough love because there's not, never really an opportunity to, as what is happening with Michael Thomas here. Uh, didn't even talk about Michael Strahan, who of course is a Hall of Famer, but really wasn't with that group for a long time. The way like OC and Justin Tuck and Matthias Kiwanuka were together for a while. Uh, Strahan retired, I think, after the 07 Super Bowl, right? I mean, check down. Oh, no. Joe Hayden. Oh, football came out! It's rolling around! Pick it up! Oh, my goodness. Maurice Hurst falls on it. Chaos. Chaos. In New Jersey. Of course, we have to take a look at the play that ended the first quarter. Alvin Kamara just caught the ball in the flat is just more of an athlete than Joe Hayden, I guess, at this point in his career. Adore Jackson, though, popped him. Or, hold on a second. Nah, Adore Jackson popped him. Derek Cooper right there, Dontrell Cobb right there, Xavier McKinney right there. None of them could come up with the football. Julian Love is on the ground. Got to figure, how did he get on the ground? He just dove for the ball and completely missed. <laughs> Uh, and then it was just kind of rolling around. Cooper dove for it again and kind of missed. And then Maurice Hurst just picks it up and then trips and falls down. Uh, again, chaos. Now look at Melvin Gordon. Nice little run there, getting fancy for eight. There are no linebackers. Melvin Gordon's going to get it. I mean, I guess the, Demario Davis is there. Ooh, Melvin Gordon getting some extra yardage. They were far. Got to be able to run the ball when you see them lined up so far away. Nick Duvall split out wide. I'm I'm a little bit curious how that's going to work out. We're going to go over the middle, though. Wide open is Kadarius Tony. Good catch and run for Tony. First and 10. Quick throw for Smith. Up the seam. Speed kills. And the Saints allow another touchdown. Larry Smith beating the Saints for a second time today for big yardage. This one is first touchdown. Going to be 21-14 Giants. They just drifted away. Cody Bailey throws the ball perfectly to Larry Smith. Rookie to rookie connection. And it's 21-14. It's been a chaotic game. I keep saying that, but it, it has been. Second and three. Is this a run? It is. Camara, man. 
as my number today. Six rushes for 67 yards. Maybe you should give him the ball more. I thought that might have still been a run. Oh, that's wide open. They had options. Darnay Holmes can't wrap up. Neither can whoever that was. Tontrell Cobb on the sideline ends up finishing the play, but it's another big catch and run by Michael Thomas. Am I in the twilight zone? What's happening? No disrespect to Michael Thomas, one of the league's best runners, or receivers, excuse me. But he's not going to beat you with his legs more often than not down the field. It's just not going to happen. Second and 10. Stretch left. That is a good one-on-one -on -one play by Tay Crowder. Playing for that extension, even though he doesn't want to be here. I like the effort. Playing for his next team. Maybe it is a Giants. Who knows? Third and 11. Make a stop. Underneath. Cooper! Big hit. But he holds on to the football. Brings up fourth and five. Derek Cooper, it's just the closing speed. Like, we were going to give them the underneath the whole time. Whole time. I think that was the rookie Chris Kennard, by the way, out of Oregon State who we talked about. It was not. It was Baker. So, scratch that. Don't worry about it. Kick is good for the Saints. 21-17. Ryan Suckup puts it through the uprights. And we have a really good opportunity to score here before the end of the half. There's plenty of time. Six minutes. Don't have to be too quick. But I mean, we want to make sure we get in the end zone. No question. And they stop Melvin Gordon on first down. He stays in the game. Second and ten. We'll work off play action. Mm, they, they knew what route we were going to run with Nick Duvall. But they didn't with Odell Beckham Jr. He gets in behind. Perfectly thrown ball from Cody Bailey. Only six completions and two touchdowns. And previously, it was five completions for two touchdowns. So that is very nice. We'll run the ball here on first down. Little RPO game. But this is always going to go to Melvin Gordon, though. It's not terrible. Jaden Rhodes. Here we go, Jaden. Kind of like the worst route I've ever seen. I think he got bumped a little. No, maybe he didn't. I was just <laughs> a terrible, like, quick out. It was so rounded. It gets the job done, though. And we're going to work out of empty and maybe take a shot down the field. Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, nope. Ball came out. Recovered by Evan Neal. Okay. I was trying to throw it away. Like out of the back of the end zone or something. But, um, yeah, we were hit at the, like right before we were trying to throw the football. And that obviously could have been disastrous. End up catching a little bit of a break. We go outside for Odell. Wow, that was nearly picked off by Wilson. I thought Odell had so much more space. I saw Kadarius Tony, or yeah, Kadarius Tony sitting wide open, by the way. I saw that, but I thought, also thought this was wide open. And we had space to run after the catch. So, oh, he stopped. He stopped is why. Ah, uh, was it an option? No, I don't know why he stopped. He just stopped moving. That could have been so bad. It should have been good. I don't think that was the wrong decision. You can say, okay, maybe Kadarius Tony, but I don't think it was the wrong decision to go for Odell there. We're going to try to step up with Bailey. He's got good wheels, and he's got the first down. Vanilla Vic getting his one positive run of the game. That happens about once a game. That brings us to the two-minute warning. It's been a really good drive, I would say. A couple of mistakes here and there, but the time management, clock management, has been very good. Melvin Gordon. Oh, we got blocks. Larry Smith. Great block, and it's a Melvin Gordon touchdown. Wow. Did not expect that. Explosiveness from the veteran. We got good blocks, too. I think you really have to credit the blocking down the field. Nick Duvall, seal back. And, I mean, great blocks down the field. Now, the only problem with scoring really quickly like that is that... The Saints have a really good chance to score before the half. We've seen them move the ball really quickly when they want to. Two-minute drill for Winston and the Saints. We'll see what they can do. Where's Kayvon Thibodeau this game, man? Where's Kayvon Thibodeau? Ooh, thankfully. Pressure forced Winston to throw a bad ball there over the middle. Leonard Williams kind of pressured Jameis, I think you can say. But Kayvon Thibodeau has not been on the field. It's been a lot of Quincy Roche, a lot of William Golston. It's a run. It is a run. And there's a flag. It's got to be a hold. That can't be a face mask, surely. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to decline that, by the way. Bring up third and 11. End the clock stops. 
we can really get this game out of hand before the uh, second half. So we're going to continue to try and do that. Dontrell Cobb, what is that angle, man? I'm not even controlling him that time. He just took a really bad angle. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Winston throwing down the field. Hayden in coverage. Ball's tipped up and falls incomplete. I don't know who he was targeting. Looked like maybe the fullback down the field. Also, Kennard is wearing number 43 at tight end. Looks a little bit weird. And Michael Thomas is wide open. There is a flag, though. I think this one could be coming back. Let's see what the penalty is. It's another hold for the Saints. Thank you, Trevor Penning. So we'll take it this time, second and 20. That's a killer. Huge mistake by the young left tackle. Leonard Williams chasing him down. He's so slow. And that is a completion. Chris Kennard ducking out of bounds, but it's third and 14. As William Golston, kind of a bruised elbow. We're going to keep him in. Because I don't know where Kayvon Thibodeau is. Where is Kayvon Thibodeau, man? It's a... Uh, it's an issue. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and switch things up, maybe down the line. Oh my goodness, what are these angles? Blade down the sideline, it's another first down for the Saints. Here's what we're gonna do. I'll show you. Sub linebacker, Tay Crowder, rush right end. Derek Cooper, show me what you got. That'll come into effect on the next play. I mean, we're just not capitalizing here. They've made so many mistakes and we just haven't taken advantage. They're going to come away with a touchdown. It feels inevitable. But Cooper off the edge, take Crowder back in. This could be a really nasty setup. Second and six. Yeah, that's that's my fault with Joe Hayden. We cannot tackle Michael Thomas down the field, by the way. This is ridiculous. Although Cooper is a rush end, I think is really scary. I like the idea of it. 92 speed, electric. Winston trying to make something happen. Cooper got to him, but he throws it away. Oh, it's a screen. Leonard Williams doesn't have the speed to track him down. Kamara back over the middle. Third and two. Step up. We want to play the end zone. We don't need to be five yards deep. Throw over the middle. Complete to Olave. It's a first down and a timeout by the Saints. First and goal. They could run here. We don't really have a nose in. To just fill that with Dontrell Cobb. It did not work. Alvin Kamara, touchdown. Saints very far from out of this thing it's going to be a four point game pending the extra point if i'm the saints here i go for two by the way try to make it a field goal game don't really know why they wouldn't do that here but 28 24 is the score with 37 seconds to go here in the first half probably not enough time for us to do anything we do have three timeouts might be worth a shot but i think it's unlikely maybe depends on what type of return we get Larry Smith will have a chance to return this. Have to see what we uh, we look like field positioning wise from the 30. Okay, look at the safety. They blend in. He's right on the uh, the logo there. Am I crazy for saying he blends in? I don't think so. Larry Smith is open. Good ball from Bailey. Smith working down the sideline is knocked out of bounds at the 37. Okay, yeah, I think we're gonna go for it. I think we're gonna try and score a touchdown before the half. Larry Smith, great separation. Seeing Melvin Gordon in the block, it seems like they're only going to send four at the absolute most. So, we don't need to be too crazy here. We're going to go to the end zone. Larry Smith couldn't draw pass interference. Be better. This is field goal range. Don't want to get too crazy. We're going to try to dial up a screen. Did not work. And now, all of a sudden, it's third down and ten. 18 seconds to play. Gonna roll out with Cody Bailey. He's got plenty of space and plenty of speed. Bailey diving out of bounds. Nine seconds remain. Vanilla Vic. All right, you know, you, fine. Merch link in description. A lot of you guys are picking up some Vanilla Vic merch, so I like that. I'm gonna have new designs soon for something. I, I know we like, you know, Kiss the Ring, King of New York. There are a bunch of things we can do. Easy reads. I need to get some ideas, though, for what to do. We're going to the end zone. Nick Duval 6-4. Don't try to catch the ball like that. Uh, couldn't score a touchdown, but we'll get three before the end of the half. You guys know Wyatt Anthony is automatic. Dude's a superstar kicker. Doesn't have the superstar trait that we know of. He could. He could. Does have 99 kick power straight out of the draft. Uh, and has been unbelievable. But we don't know his depth trait yet. 
Uh, pretty fun first half, man. 31-24. We extend this thing to a touchdown. And our offense, I think you can say, has been electric so far. Okay, the link is down below. You can check it out. Use code BANGLE. Welcome to halftime. And okay, let's start with my first slip. I put some decent money on these because I, I feel really, really confident just based off of previous production and the matchups on these particular days. However, the only problem is that some of these I created with John Bates, thinking that he was a lock for higher than two receptions. He was going to start. He had four and three catches in back-to-back -back games, and that wasn't even as the starter. And then now he got injured and didn't end up playing. So this is going to void. But let's talk about the other picks. Jeff Wilson over what is it? 65 and a half rushing yards feels like an absolute lock. I'm a little bit worried because whenever it feels too good to be true, it probably is. But Jeff Wilson over 65 and a half. He's done that in each of his last three games and playing an Atlanta Falcons team that is susceptible to yards on the ground. It feels too good to be true. George Pickens higher than 49 and a half receiving yards. I do like he's playing a good Tampa Bay defense. However, with Kenny Pickett, their connection is obviously pretty good. He's getting targeted quite a bit. And when you see the targets, it's usually a good indicator that yards are going to be following. And that, yeah, 83 yards, 102 yards in back-to-back -back games. He only needs to get 50 in order to cash. I think it's quite doable because I think he's probably going to get seven or eight targets. Nick Chubb higher than 97 and a half rushing yards. The Patriots get beat on the ground. They're in rough run games. It's constant action on the ground. And Nick Chubb has gone way over 100 in each of his last three. I'm sure he's due for regression, but higher than 97 and a half for a team that's going to run the ball consistently. Nick Chubb feels like a pretty good bet. It also feels like Brees Hall is coming into his own a bit. Uh, Green Bay occasionally is susceptible to yards on the ground. They've got a pretty good defense overall, so I'm a little bit wishy-washy on this one, but he's coming off of a massive game, and he had 97 rushing yards and a touchdown, 100 receiving yards, but only two catches, so a lot of volatility with that, we'll say. But I think he's going to get more and more touches as he proves to be a dynamic threat for the Jets and against Green Bay. I think he can probably get 84 total yards. I think that's doable. And I, as you can see, I added John Bates to quite a few here. Kirk Cousins, I do like lower than two passing touchdowns because if he hits two, it's a wash. It's a push. So you don't really have to worry about that. The only way you're going to lose with Kirk Cousins is if he throws for three. He's thrown for only one in back-to-back -back games. We've seen some quarterbacks come in and not throw for two touchdowns recently against the Dolphins, who have been giving up a lot of points, though. So I'm a little bit worried about it. But I don't really think he throws for three based on, you know, prior performance. So I went with lower than two passing touchdowns for Kirk, especially with Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison. They can just punch the ball in if they're close. David Njoku is one of my favorite picks of the entire weekend. I think if I make any more slips, he's going to be on them. He's a big part of this new Browns offense. They want to get David Njoku involved. It's a big focus for them this year. He's getting targets. He's getting yards. He's a really athletic player. And I think over 45 and a half receiving yards is honestly way too low. I think probably 55 would have been a way better line. 45, Again, anything can happen, but it feels like a steal. And then Geno Smith has been easy money. They're playing Arizona, shootouts for days with the Cardinals. I really think he's going to throw for over 265 and a half passing yards to 266 to cash. He threw for 268 last week and only had 25 attempts. You'd expect him to get a lot more attempts. So I think 265 passing yards or 266 feels like a given. I, I get worried to say anything like that, but it feels really good. Remember, use code Bengal on underdog. I have Robert Tunyon higher than 25 and a half. Uh, the Jets here are not the best defense, but it seems like Tunyon's just consistently coming really close to this marker. And against like not really a true great defense and still an up and coming receiving core for the Packers, if you want to say that. I think Tunyon's going to get consistent targets, and I think he will approach that 21 and a half mark. But this one, I probably could go either way. So, Gino, Chris Godwin, I have lower 64 and a half. This one's tough because they're playing the Steelers. The Steelers got absolutely torched by Josh Allen a week ago, allowed, I think, 400 plus passing yards. But Chris Godwin, I hate to say it, really talented player. I got a veteran rest day on Thursday, looked into that. Uh, 64 and a half just feels like too many. A lot of mouths to feed on that that Tampa Bay offense. I think they're going to probably get out to a pretty good lead early, meaning that they probably would run the ball a little bit more often than they usually do. And Chris Godwin, just he doesn't stay healthy. 
I, I get worried about ever going with the over on him. He's talented enough to where he absolutely could go over, but I think there are a lot of variables that probably push him under. Alexander Madison, higher than seven and a half receiving yards. This one has a little bit of volatility as well. Add one catch against uh, New Orleans, one catch against Detroit. Both did go for well over seven and a half receiving yards. Three catches in the game last week against the Bears. It seems like he's just consistently getting a couple of scheme targets out of the backfield per game. Kirk Cousins is capable of hitting the check down, which you can't say about every quarterback in the league. And that means Alexander Madison probably will come really close to that seven and a half receiving yards mark. He's probably going to get a catch. And then I took Tom Brady higher than 276 and a half passing yards. Uh, the Steelers defense is just allows a lot of yards. It's kind of what it is, especially through the air. Josh Allen, 400 yards last week. Brady's going to throw the ball a ton. I do worry a bit about them getting out to an early lead, like I talked about with Godwin, and then Brady not having a chance to throw for this many yards. But it's only about 280. I think he's going to do that. But be sure to tweet at me some of your locks for this weekend. I might make a slip with them. This is Friday as you see this, or hopefully maybe it's Saturday. Um, and if it's Sunday, you better get on it. But tweet me your locks. I might try to make a lineup with some of your favorite picks. I'll check them out, see if they fit. Let's get back to the video, though. Thanks to Underdogs for sponsoring this video. Link is down below. Use code BANGLE. I'll see you for the second half. Uh, the Saints have had, I want to call it, some luck. Also, for those who skip around in the episodes and miss when I say important things, if you want to know, did anyone else notice the Jaguar says Gil Dangus? When I was trying to do a bunch of things to fix the disconnecting back to the draft, one of the things I tried was adding another user to the league and hopping into a game with that team. So that's why the Jaguar says Gil Dangus, because I have another account that's in the league. Everything is on autopilot, so I'm not controlling anything, but it was something I tried to fix the league. And I mean, it fixed. I don't know if it was a thing I did or me complaining about it and EA did something. I don't know. But either way, we haven't had any problems. Didn't have to create anything. Um, any other new league recreate everybody. Didn't have to do any of that. So very happy about that. But uh, we will start with the football in the 18 here in the third quarter, up by a touchdown. Melvin Gordon is our new starting running back, it seems. I need to be really careful with this fatigue stuff because... We just have backups playing constantly. And, and really, Tyron Matthews in the zone after one... Like, he was in the area for an incompletion. Is that all it takes? Oh, that play sucked. Yeah, good. Sit down, Roy Lopez. Reverse bounty gate. I hope they blitz here. Nope. Thought a screen could work out really well. It still might. We got blockers. Azudu kind of just blocks a player right into the lane. Brings up third and six. Cody Bailey has been very good today. And uh, we need to be need to be better. Always need to be better. I don't care how good you are. Need to be better. That'll work. How do we get Tyron Matthew out of the zone? Don't allow yards. Four. He's going to allow four yards here. A little touch pass to Larry Smith. One of my favorite plays. Oh, we got a block maybe from... Oh, no. Gordon, please step up there. All right. Second and three. I've talked about this before. Number one thing. Don't allow a sack. Obviously, don't throw a turnover or, you know, anything like that. We're going to go deep to Duvall. We get that over his head. Maybe got to high point that. Or got to pass lead that out in front. Uh, brings up third and three. A little RPO action. Probably will run the ball no matter what. And Gordon got tripped up. It's a joke, dude. It's a joke. <laughs> we'll punt. I don't know what to say about that drive. Yeah, a little disappointing for sure. Oh, that's wide open. Dude, no! Kennard just rolled over! He just brutalized whoever that was on the outside. Was that Darnay Holmes? And I, yes, I've seen the video. of him getting a cramp worked on. No, it was Xavier McKinney. Xavier McKinney just got thrown. Chris Kennard went right through him. And you know what? In the battle of the top tight ends of this past draft class... Chris Kennard and Nick Duvall. Kennard, three catches for 66 yards. Duvall only one for nine up to this point. Larry Smith having a freaking game, by the way. Four for 124 and a touchdown. But do it all, Duvall. Been kind of quiet so far. And it's more Chris Kennard action. I'm starting to hate this guy. Second and two. Give me a run. It is. And we're right there. Kamara breaks a tackle. 
loses a yard in the process, brings up third and three. I form for the Saints. Get ready to make a play. Shoot a gap, make a play. Shoot a gap, make a play. Dontrell Cobb all over it. Kiss the ring. King of New York coming up big on prime time, making a really big play. A first down there, you could say that changes the game. Saints are knocking on the door, potentially tying things up. Instead, they're only going to come away with a field goal, pending. Yep, going to be good. And it is 31-27. Plenty of time left, but that third down stop was huge. We're going to take this one out. I just like the opportunity because, yeah, even though we might be six or seven yards short of the touchback sometimes, there is always that chance to take it all the way down the field. The Saints have 405 uh, yards of total offense, by the way. That's too many. Too many in the third quarter. We'll check down to Larry Smith, who will continue his great game. Kind of the first check down that found it, or that found him on the field, and came his way. Second and three. I want to throw that slant. I'm going to throw for Duval. There is a flag, though. He couldn't catch it anyway. The struggles continue for Nick Duval. But we get roughly the passer. Cameron Jordan hitting the QB late. And we'll take that first down. How about a run? All right. It's not great. Gordon at nine rushes for 40 yards and a touchdown. Those numbers are being inflated a little bit by, you know, the, the huge play. I say huge. It was a pretty big play. We're going down the field. That was a mistake. Third and eight. I need Larry Smith to get open here. He's going to. He's going to. Good route from Larry Smith, and he fumbled the ball. It's recovered by the Saints. And Paulson Adebo ensures that the Saints are going the other way. That's not good. Good ball from Bailey. Good, good route, good catch. But it was Demario Davis, the long-term, long-time captain of the Saints defense, the former Arkansas State standout. Ends up making a big play here on primetime. And the Saints have an opportunity to go ahead in this game. Dontrell Cobb trying to go ahead and give, it, give us the football back. Michael Thomas breaking tackles all over the place. What is going on? He has seven catches for like 170 yards. Olave going to get it. And somehow, dude, is the spin broken? We can't make tackles on it. Up the middle. Cobb just ran by him, I guess. Winston with time time running out and it's Tay Crowder Winston loses a bunch Tay Crowder we needed you to make a play we needed somebody to make a play Tay Crowder answers the call Winston with a ton of time just kept backing up and backing up and backing up and uh, obviously did not work out as Akeel Edmonds we get a good cover player on the field our defense has changed I, I want to fix that I want him in coverage I want Cooper blitzing, and I want somebody to make a play. Check down. Check down. He checks down. We got to wrap up now. Got to wrap up now. Dontrell Cobb eventually does. Had a little bit of help. And the Saints, I think, are going to have to punt here from the 42. They're going to go for it. Or it's a fake. Or it's a fake. Fourth and nine from the 42. It's too long. That sack was a drive killer. They do go for the field goal. It's hooking back and short. No good. A real deep field goal try. I don't mind it because you're punting there. At least you have a chance to put up points. But it just goes to show you, man, sacks are drive killers. They really are. It's so tough to come back from something like that. And, um, you know, they almost do. We're going to go down the field. Duval had a step. Nelson in coverage. But, again, the pass was errant. Tony, just get him the football. And hopefully he makes a play happen. The fact that he doesn't have jukebox is criminal, by the way. As he is maybe, if he ever plays, which he doesn't. But if he ever plays, is one of the most elusive, if not the most elusive player in the NFL. And he just doesn't play like that. As we're going to throw a quick streak to Duvall, who drops it. Nick Duvall struggling today, man. I, I think now we can, we can recognize it. End of the third quarter. Going to be third and eight to start the fourth. Other side of the field. We have a narrow four-point lead. I'd love for them to blitz here. They don't. It's bait. Odell open. Good route. Great throw. Great catch. 
First down for Big Blue. Second and 10. Duvall's open. There's a catch, I think his second of the game. He hasn't had a ton of targets or anything, but that's a, that's a nice one. Third and four, we're gonna trust Melvin Gordon in the blockers here. Gordon, uh, fourth and inches. I did one too many moves with Melvin Gordon. Brings up fourth and inches from the 17. It's a 34 yard field goal. It would make it 34-27, that's a touchdown lead. I hate, I hate to play like this, but from fourth and inches, I just don't want to risk anything. I know a QB sneak probably gets it, but going up by a touchdown, I think late in the game here is going to be really important. And it's not the flashy play, but we know it's a guaranteed touchdown lead. And I think it's the smart play. You'd like to be able to trust your offense, but we don't have Saquon Barkley again. So, it is what it is. Oh, Dontrell Cobb just cannot beat Alvin Kamara today. Won't happen. 14 rushes for 85 yards and a touchdown. You know, I wonder how we're up in this game right now. I feel like our defense has been completely destroyed. We've allowed well over 300 passing yards. We've been torched on the ground as well. Jameis has 362 passing yards and two touchdowns. I think the difference in the game right now uh, are the two turnovers. I mean, we turn over, we had, had a turnover back with Larry Smith, but it was the uh, the pick six by Derek Cooper. It's a nice play. Ojulari and Jackson. And I think for the most part, we've been pretty perfect on offense, which is nice. It's a run, second and 13 run at this point in the game. Okay, it brings up third and 11. Is that what you, you were looking for? We've called this defense before. I want Cooper blitzing. I want Akeel Edmonds in coverage. And I want somebody to make a play. I got locked on a defensive lineman. Oh no. William Golston, make a play. Hayden right there! Cannot intercept it. The Saints wisely will punt this time. It's Mitch Wisnowski. And we got to control the clock. We got to win the game. This quick pitch is so bad. Let's see if it works this time. We got, I mean, decent blocking with more speed. Maybe that's something. Second and eight, should we just run the ball? We want to take time off the clock, but at the same time, we don't want to concede and just punt because there's too much time to do that. Second and eight, I don't mind running the ball in this particular spot. Are kind of backed up to our own end zone. And that's good blocking and it's good power for Melvin Gordon for six. Third and two. I think we run the ball again. We'll bring in the fullback, Skyler Styles, and we'll need a good block. There's Melvin Gordon. We got a great block from Andrew Thomas down the field. And now our starting right guard, Mark Lewinsky, is injured. This is a run that isn't a run. Odell Beckham Jr. in motion. He'll receive it. Jaden Rhodes, brother. We needed him to make a block there, and now Marcus McKeithen going to come in at right guard for the injured Lewinsky. He'll stay for a little bit. We're gonna run out of empty and see what we can do here. Duval, turn up field. That'll work. Brings up third and short. 26th ranked passing offense on the year, by the way. 271 yards today. And on third and two, Larry Smith. I got a good feeling about this. Show me what you can do. True speed. Larry Smith into the open field. He's past Marshawn Lattimore. He's past another Saint. And it's a first down for Larry Smith and the Giants. Perfect time to catch him napping off play action. And they didn't really bite. Didn't really bite. We're going for Tony. Make a play. That's got to be pass interference. Probably getting a little bit too aggressive there. I mean, he looked open. Melvin Gordon wrapped up on second and 10. We got to stay in field goal range, though. So... Whatever it is that doesn't turn the ball over and doesn't take a sack, that's what I want. Third and 10. Getting a little bit congested, but Melvin Gordon is open. And that's fine. That's a fine result. Didn't look down the field. It wasn't the game plan. He's been automatic this year. Wyatt Anthony drills it. We're going to extend our lead to two scores here deep into the game. Exactly what we wanted to do. 
Really, really happy about this. Up by 10 points, 2 minutes and 17 seconds to play. Saints with all of their timeouts. There is time for them to come, you know, and, and make a comeback, I guess, if you want to say. They're, they're really still in the game. They just have to score quickly. They can't mess around. And they've scored quickly this game. That has not been a problem for them. But we'll see what happens here. Crunch time for Winston. We saw his two-minute drill earlier, and I think they came out on top. Blade is huge, by the way. This guy's a, a massive human being. Two-minute warning. First play out of it. They can go to the flat all they want. Don't really care. Second and six. They can just check down all they want. I wish it would take more time, though, as Leonard Williams is down. That's no good for the playoffs. We're blitzing. How does he have this much time with a blitz? Oh, no. Michael Thomas caught it. Julian Love's not going to catch him, obviously. Uh, Darnay Holmes is just way too small. It's 5'9", 5'10", against 6'3", 6'4", Michael Thomas. It's a big touchdown for the Saints. It's a field goal game. Minute and 43 seconds. These games have been close. It took 34 seconds. Oh, we got, we got, we got a seal! Larry Smith in the Saints territory! Down the sideline! Celebrating! Larry Smith got caught! No! <laughs> Pushed out at the one! Where did that Saint come from? Where did he come from? Oh my goodness, Larry Smith found a crease. Blocking was just perfect. And it should have been a touchdown, of course. Never even saw that, dude. However, it's not the worst thing. And I'll tell you why. Because of where we are in the game, up by three points, obviously, you know, a touchdown would make it a, um, a two-score game. We can bleed clock at this point. We can take away their timeouts. Although, a touchdown would have been more valuable. We tried to get fancy. We tried to celebrate. We'll take the touchdown, though. Melvin Gordon. We got a timeout away from the Saints, so we'll take it. We'll go up by two scores. Going to be 44 to 34. And, yeah, I recognize that the celebration could have been disastrous. It's a two-play, one-yard touchdown drive. <laughs> Took six seconds. We got six seconds off the clock, and we burned a timeout. Melvin Gordon. Uh, nope. Alvin Kamara. 126 total yards today. Thinking about our running back for some reason. Not Saquon. Who knows what he's up to. Winston with all day. Will throw toward the sideline. I mean, Kamara had to have been open for a minute. Just didn't hit him. I'd love for Derek Cooper to win off the edge. That would be so nice. Oh, it's a screen. Tackle him? Nice. Darnay making a play. I really hate that the Saints aren't out of it yet. It's, it's a scary feeling knowing what can happen in these games. It really is. Winston with time. I mean, we'll find Michael Thomas, who has like 800 receiving yards today somehow. It's mathematically impossible, but he's done it. 231 receiving yards for Michael Thomas. Okay. Yeah. What are you going to do? Not cover Michael Thomas, I guess. <laughs> That's what. Jameis is going to approach 500 passing yards on the game. We'll let him check down. He's going to go deep, actually. Where is Xavier McKinney? Thankfully, he had a foot out of bounds. They're going to review it. Did Blade get a foot in? Oh, he might have. That actually looks like a catch. I don't like that. It is, it is a catch. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all I can say, man. <laughs> We're getting shredded today. Camara wide open. Just wrap up. Thank you. They should call a timeout there. Mistake not to call a timeout, in my opinion. I guess if you get sacked, you don't want the game to end. Blade catches it. That has to be a timeout spot. 20 seconds remain. First and goal from the three. They need a touchdown. And they got one. Chris Olave just uh, wide open. And the Saints are not out of it yet. It'll be a field goal game. They need the onside kick. 17, uh, 17 seconds to play. Not like this, man. Not like this. 501 passing yards. Onside recovery. This is it. Game on the line. 
Here's the kick. It is recovered by Melvin Gordon. We're going to sit down and we're going to win the game. And that is the ball game. 44-41, a high scoring affair here. Thursday night prime time action against the Saints. We come out on top. Don't congratulate Kayvon Thibodeau. He didn't even play. He didn't play. Crazy game. Crazy game. We got shredded. Defense, we're going to have to have a long conversation with them. Jameis Winston, four touchdowns, one pick. Cody Bailey, two touchdowns, no picks, a yard shy of 300. Very good game. Melvin Gordon, 17 carries for 69 yards and two touchdowns, only broke one tackle. Saquon broke three on three attempts. <laughs> Melvin Gordon broke one on 17. I'm so sick of him checking out, though. A fumble for Cody Bailey. We recovered it, thankfully. Kamara killed us today, too, by the way. 5.7 per carry, 86 yards, and receiving, he was good, too. I don't want to talk about Michael Thomas. Nine for 231 and two touchdowns. Let's go to the Giants. This looks better. Eight for 163 for Larry Smith. What a game. What a game. He really showcased that he's a deep threat today. Averaged over 20 yards per catch. And he had a long of 51. Odell, 5 for 50 and a touchdown. That's a good game. Happy with that. Nick Duvall didn't do much. 3 for 22. Uh, no touchdowns, of course. And uh, Kennard had 5 for 78. A little bit better. But we had some pretty good ball distribution all together. A lot of different players catching passes. Looks like seven different players. And Larry Smith had the big game. And then defensively, I don't know. Tay Crowder played pretty well. Two tackles for loss and the lone sack. Interception for Derek Cooper, which was returned for a touchdown. Forced fumble for Derek Cooper, covered by Maurice Hurst. And, the, of course, a touchdown for Derek Cooper. Who does the game ball go to? I don't know. Ooh, Joshua Azudu with an upgrade. Maybe he'll be decent at some point because I don't think he's been great so far for us. 69 run block is less than I would like it to be. But that is a big win. We go to 11 and 5. I know everyone likes it when I win, so we're doing more of it. Isn't that nice? And the Cowboys also are 11 and 5, meaning we have the division lead. If you check out the standings, the Bears are 12 and 4, currently at the top. Jags 12 and 4, and the Giants, Cowboys in the NFC. You can see Bears. I can just sort by NFC, but Bears, Giants, Cowboys, Falcons, all with 11 wins or more. Rams. Double digit. It's a big game. It's a playoff preview, potentially. We improve to the two seed. Not bad. But we do have some upgrades here before we call this an episode, and some big ones, too. Saquon, how can I upgrade you to stay on the field? Is that an option? Juke move is only a 90. I also, I did give him evasive, as you guys mentioned, and I gave him bulldozer. I think that... Um, Armbar could be better. I think that, um, where's the one that, that, that reaches for yards? Where's that one? I think that one could be better as well, but you guys let me know. I'll upgrade elusive back. I want juking and spin move to be higher. I don't know if we're going to get that though. Plus three awareness and plus one ball carrier vision. Wow. Cool. Now I will say we talked about this. I mentioned this in one of the previous episodes. I said, Hey, should I upgrade Nick Duval as a playmaker type? In the patch today, they fixed it, and it no longer gives out crazy boosts to route running altogether. So I think we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and go vertical threat here. Try to upgrade deep route running the way it's intended, I suppose. And that's not a bad upgrade, all things considered. Plus one to catch in traffic, catching, deep route running, medium route running, pass blocking, release, run block finesse, and trucking. And we also get plus two to short route running. That is a big upgrade. He goes up to a 79 overall. Medium route running playing up a bit. Deep route running slowly improving. And now short route running into the 70s. Which I think is a really nice upgrade for him. Still can't unlock anything until he's an 80. But once he is an 80, we unlock a lot. You guys let me know what you think Nick Duval should have once he gets upgraded. It's going to take a bit. But... I could see, I could see Tank, maybe not, but Slot Apprentice, I could see being pretty valuable. Bulldozer could be fun, Armbar. And then Wyatt Anthony, we won't know his dev trait until after the season. 
but he has 99 kick power and he doesn't miss. It's too accurate. I don't know what power would do at this point. It's going to be awareness anyway. Ooh, we get plus two kick accuracy. Okay. Into the 80s. Wyatt Anthony. Beast. But we knew that. By the way, Wyatt Anthony close to home from New Jersey. Playing for the Giants. Drilling field goals. He has been awesome. Check out his stats individually. 26 of 28 on the year. It's 92% of kicks, including a long of 67 has not missed an extra point this year he has been electric absolutely electric but that's going to do it for me guys thank you so much for watching the episode hope you enjoyed it and i will see you for week 18 when we take on the rams in what could be a playoff preview because a lot could change depending on who wins and loses but it could be very interesting thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one take it easy